Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. This video will be an intro to scripting. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to reference different parts of the game. We'll learn how to add scripts to our parts. And finally, we'll take a look at how to use variables in our scripts. So let's go ahead and get started and dive right in. Okay, so to get started with this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Explorer section over here on the right-hand side. If for whatever reason you don't see the Explorer section in your screen, just go ahead and go up to the View tab and select Explorer over here. And while we're here, go ahead and select the Command Bar because we're going to be using that in just a second. Okay, so now back to the Explorer menu. This is divided up into different sections that control different parts of the game. And in this video, we're mainly just going to be focusing on the workspace. If you open up the workspace, you can see that we just have a few objects right now. We have a camera, terrain, and base plate. So let's go ahead and start by adding a new part into this game. You can do that by coming up to the top and clicking on the blue cube. And once you do that, you'll see that you have a part that gets added into your game. And you also see that it gets added into the workspace section over here as well. Now that we have a new part into our game, let's go ahead and change some of the properties of this part using code. To do that, we're going to come down to the command bar. And in the command bar, we're going to be writing code that will change different parts of this part. Before we do that, we need to know how to reference this part. And basically all that means is we need to know how to write code that points to this particular part. To do that, you're going to be starting with the word game. And this is the most general category. Inside the game, there's all these different sections that you see in the Explorer menu. So this part is inside of the workspace. So after game, we need to say dot workspace to say that we want to move to this section. Inside the workspace, we're going to say dot part to reference the part that we just added. So let's go ahead and take a look and add that to our command bar. So first, we need to say game. After that, the next section is workspace. Inside the workspace, we're going to be referencing the part. And then after that, you can change whatever part, whatever property of the part that you want to. In our case, we're going to be changing its transparency. Okay, so we're going to say game, the most general. Inside the game, we're going to be looking in the workspace. Inside the workspace, we're going to be looking at the part we just added. And then from this part, we're going to be changing its transparency by setting, setting it equal to a new number. Okay, by setting, setting it equal to 1. That makes it completely transparent, so it'll be invisible. And to run this code, all you have to do is press Enter. And you see when I do that, my part disappears. If I want it to reappear, then I can change that number to 0. It reappears, and then somewhere halfway in between 0 and 1, it will make it semi-transparent. So if I do 0 0.5, that'll make it see-through. Okay, so we can do the same thing we just did in the command bar by adding a script onto a part. To do that, we're just going to co come over to the Explorer menu, find our part, and click on the plus sign. After that, we're going to start typing the word script, and then select it once it shows up in the menu. This opens up a blank script that you can write code. Let's go ahead and start by deleting the print hello world message. And to do this, we're going to be basically just writing the same thing we did before. So the most general category is game. Inside the game, we're going to be referencing the workspace. Inside the workspace, we're going to be referencing the part. From this part, we're going to be changing its transparency property. And we're going to be setting this equal to 0 0.5. So once we run our code, this will make the part see-through just like we did before. One difference, though, to actually run this code, I have to start the game. So to do that, go ahead and just press the play button. Okay, and if I walk over to the part, I see that I have a semi-transparent part that is see-through. Okay, so now let's head back to the script and see how we can make this a little bit neater. So instead of typing out this whole string right here, let's go ahead and use a variable to make this a little bit cleaner. So to make a variable, the first thing I'm going to do is say local. Next will be the variable's name. And let's just keep it simple. We'll just call it part. And we're going to set this equal to 
And we have a couple different options for this. We can do what we did before and say game.workspace.part.transparency. But instead of that, an easier way to do it would be saying script.parent. And the reason this works, if we look over on the Explore menu, we have our script. And by saying dot parent, that basically means move up a level. So the script right now is inside of the part, and moving up a level will reference the part. So script.parent would be exactly the same as saying game.workspace.part. Now what I can do, instead of saying that whole string of code, I can say part, which is the name of my variable. And this variable is referencing the part over here. So I can say part dot transparency equals 0 0.5 and this will do the same thing as the code that we just wrote before and if you want you can change the name of this variable so if you want to say something like brick instead then you can do that and all you'd have to change is this first part instead of part we're now calling it brick okay so let me go ahead and run this code to show you that it does the exact same thing Okay, so I'm in the game again, and I still have my semi-transparent part. Okay, so just to conclude what we did in this video, we learned how to reference a part that we add to a game. We learned how to add a script to that part, and we also learned how to use a variable to make our code a little bit neater. So this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.